Honestly, I love reviewing Lexuses because when I look at their website for information, their marketing is so incredibly dramatic and it gets me every single time. <clears throat> and I quote, Stunning in every detail, its expressive reinterpretation of the signature spindle grill is flanked by a pair of exquisite jewel-like headlamps, its body elegantly shaped to evoke power and grace. Whoever writes this copy should at least write like romantic novels or at least fan fiction or something. Anyways, welcome back to the channel. Hey Sparks, welcome back to Sparkplug TV where I do car reviews for literally everybody, not just car enthusiasts. I am quite literally 1,000 hours of watch time away from being monetized, so please help me out by liking this video, commenting down below, subscribing to my channel, and smashing that bell icon so that you get notified whenever I drop a new video, which is every single Friday. Thank you so much. Okay, so sometimes here on Sparkplug TV, I get swept up in a word that describes the overall effect that a car has on me. And I think today, the word has definitely gotta be loyalty. Because the fully redesigned 2023 Lexus RX 350 evokes so much loyalty from owners that it is the highest selling midsize luxury SUV to date. Before I delve deeper into the almighty RX, I would first like to thank Johnson Lexus of Raleigh for letting me borrow today's RX 350. Johnson Lexus with locations in Raleigh and Durham is the highest selling luxury brand dealership in North Carolina and the surrounding states. Check the link in the description below. Did you know that Lexus RX is considered to be the very first luxury midsize crossover SUV next to the Mercedes M-Class? They both came out technically in the US for the 1998 model year, but the RX first hit Japanese markets in 1997, while the M-Class was built in Alabama in the US and wasn't sold until 98. Today, Lexus continues to take the W's on all fronts for the RX as it is still considered to be one of the highest selling luxury midsize crossover SUVs on the market ever. According to goodcarbadcar.net, the Lexus RX outsold all of its competitors by tens of thousands of units, except of course for the BMW X5, which only sold about 5,000 less than the RX. I'm a bigger BMW stand anyway. I mean, I knew that the RXs were popular, but like, holy shit, I didn't realize how popular. Lexus hopes to continue to sit on the Iron Throne, so to speak, with the fully redesigned 2023 models. This year's redesigned RX comes in six trims, two drivetrains, four powertrains, but unfortunately for some, only two rows of seating. They have foregone the three-road RXs for now, but might be bringing it back later on. Just go buy a Highlander or something. It's virtually the same thing. They've also kicked the V6 to the curb and promised that the RX 500H model with its electric motor will produce 367 horsepower, getting zero to 60 in 5.9 seconds. Back to this RX 350 and you're met with the turbocharged 2.5 liter inline four cylinder engine that outputs 275 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. The hybrid version gets a CVT and most models come either with front wheel or all wheel drive, but the performance models come standard with all-wheel drive. This front-wheel drive RX350 gets 0-60 to 60 in an unfortunate 7.6 seconds and has a top speed of 124 miles an hour. So, I mean, if the engine is small and the performance numbers are kind of mid, why are they selling so well? Because guess what? Lexus loyalists don't give a about performance. When I filmed the B-roll yesterday, I actually ended up speaking to two RX loyalists. One of them, no joke, has owned RXs since they first debuted in 98, and they told me that they don't care about performance. They just want prestige badging, luxury styling, and most importantly, a comfortable ride. In terms of luxury styling, the 23 RX350 delivers 120%. Hang on, let me try to describe this like in a Lexus advertisement. 
<clears throat> the all new take on the ultra iconic spindle grill is further enhanced by the hood's commanding position over said grill. The gorgeous, stunning LED daytime running lights are made even more so by the addition of two LED dots above the super incomparable L shaped daytime running lights. The back end thrusts you into the 21st century with its unbelievable light bar and a rear fascia that looks like it's been cinched by a steel bone corset to give you elegance, class, and grace. <laughs> All jokes aside, they really did do an incredible job on the exterior restyle. They kept certain cues that make it look like an RX, but with a more dramatic and elegant flair. In my satirical rendition of the Lexus advertising, I forgot to mention that the side profile of the new RX is the most recognizable portion of the redesign. You can see it from the A pillar all the way down to the C pillar. It's got that quintessential RX lexus -y kind of swoop look. Anyways, let's go inside and see if they gave the interior the same treatment. Center console goes back and forth and back and forth. Anyways, prepared to be immersed in the most fantastical driver-focused environment you'll ever experience. No, but seriously, I am fully impressed by the redesign of the interior. Lexus's website states, experience an interior meticulously designed to connect the driver to the vehicle like never before. For once in my life though, I actually agree with them. The dashboard from the leftmost vent all the way to the rightmost part of the infotainment screen is positioned just enough that it's fully driver focused, but not too much that it's inaccessible to the passenger. It's the little things about the redesign of this interior, like for example, the seat memory buttons, gas door, and automatic tailgate are all conveniently placed and much more accessible than in previous models. The dashboard itself seems massive and commanding with its multi-layered cliff like design. It's so cool. The gauge cluster is nice and it harkens back to Lexus's of old with its bezel style physical gauge in the middle and fully digital readouts. The only customization that happens though is on the left hand side and slightly in the middle when you change drive modes. I just wish that Lexus would give their own bespoke informational readouts on the left hand side because I'm not gonna lie it's giving RAV4. I'm tired. It's tired. We're all tired. The steering wheel is well designed and has multiple materials on it. I like how it's large and in charge, but somehow kind of seems smaller in a way. I think it's because of the center part. The infotainment system comes standard with a very quick and very responsive 9.8 inch touchscreen, but you can opt for the 14 inch one as well. Lexus now provides profiles that save your preferred driving style, climate control, and music streaming. It also now comes standard with an Alexa or Siri style AI that's supposed to be intuitive in the way that it takes commands. You can even change the volume with it. Wireless CarPlay and Android Auto is standard, but Lexus is trying to make it so that you almost don't need it. Kind of like a Tesla. The center console has the tiniest little booby little knob to change gears with, and it's almost giving Prius, but everything else in the center console is laid out really well, and I really like the open pour wood grain. In terms of styling, there is a cornucopia of options. Wood grains, materials, everything that you can imagine, there is an option for it. This is the Birch New Luxe Soft Touch vegan leather with black open pore wood grain and I just I love the, the way that the new seats are styled they're gorgeous and you can truly cannot tell that it's not real butter I mean leather I'm just amazed at how far Lexus has come in terms of styling and technology kudos to them I am really trying to get disowned from my family all right let's see how it performs on the road Ding. foremost, I really don't like this backup camera. It makes everything not look where it actually is. Like that mailbox was not that close to me. You know, and in terms of like the steering wheel, I'm surprised and I'm very grateful that it actually came standard with some paddle shifters. That's not bad for a four cylinder. I think the only issue that I have with the engine sometimes is that when you 
push the accelerator really hard off of the line, it kind of second guesses itself and then sometimes feels like it's getting away from you almost, so to speak. I mean, they need to figure something else out with the turbo to make it, to, to tune it better so that it like goes off the line better or that it like does better. But I will say that like this eight speed transmission is actually very good. I mean, if you think about it, this is their bread and butter. I mean, this is what they sell the most of. And so it has to be almost a flagship, even though it's not technically a flagship. All right, well, that about does it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon so that you get notified whenever I drop a new video, which is every single Friday. I've really memorized that line. <laughs> so the real tea is, is that I have to make this quick because there's a customer waiting on trying to drive this. So what I can say about the redesigned 23 Lexus RX 350 is that I actually like it. I cannot believe how much I like it. It's comfortable. It's decent in the pickup and the get up and go. And I mean, it's it's got all the tech that I would want out of a luxury car. This is the baseline model and you can get the luxury package as well. But, you know, for that model, you're getting like a panoramic sunroof, the fully digital gauge cluster, and a much larger screen. But honestly, I am satisfied enough with everything that's going on here. The only thing I think that I would want more of, obviously, and this is just me, is a better powertrain. I don't mind that it's front wheel drive. I mean, it is supposed to be a daily driver kind of car. I mean, it's not terrible. But I think that Lexus needs to, and Toyota in general, just needs to work on their powertrains. I don't love the fact that it kind of gets up and gets away from you. Like, it just it just kind of feels like it's just wildly unbridled, like, and not in a good way, um, if that makes sense. I'm surprised by the road noise. That was a little surprising. I was expecting it to be a lot more supple and softer and quieter. Other than that, I mean, honestly... It's a really cool looking and feeling car and it's great for the highway. I love that it comes with paddle shifters. You know, I love all of the technology. You know, I love these new electronic release doors. They're getting there. Lexus is definitely getting there. They just, I mean, honestly, out of everything, the one complaint that I really truly have is the powertrain. So on that note, I'm gonna go text my parents and let them know that I have given a Lexus rave reviews and I'm gonna try to convince them to still let me have a Christmas. So happy holidays to me. So anyways, thank you guys again for watching and I will see you next Friday. Bye bye Hey Sparks, thanks for watching today's video. If you want more Sparkplug TV content, click right here. Right here. You got two options. <laughs> Choose one or both.